Hello, and welcome back to another haul. Another haul. This is the September haul for the year 2020. Yes, it is. I'm pretty sure we all know that. Anyway, let's get on with the haul. I have quite a few mangas this month. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19 plus 15. Um, I can't do maths and just count to count. 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 34 volumes. 34 volumes and the DVD. And the DVD. And some art books. And some art books. Anyway, let's get on with the um, video. First up, I have a DVD, which we will do first, which is Vampire Night Guilty, which is Vampire Night Season 2. I had Season 1 already, I was wanting Season 2, but I wasn't willing to pay, like, the £50 they were asking for it to, on Amazon. So I did actually manage to find this elsewhere for £7, which I was perfectly willing to get this for £7. But yeah, this is a continuation of Vampire Night. Obviously, in season two, I dropped the manga, but I still enjoyed the anime for what it is. Although season one was the better of the two. Vampire Night, if you don't know, is a series about vampires. There's this academy called True Cross Academy. Of Cross Academy, True Cross is Blue Exorcist. There's this academy called Cross Academy, where there's these two classes, the human class, which is the day class, and the vampire class, which is the night class. And the students from each class they aren't really allowed to meet, they're not allowed to know that vampires go to school. Anyway, Yuki is a girl who, has, after being found as a child, was adopted by the headmaster, so she's attending this school, along with Zero who is a vampire but he's attending the day class because he doesn't want anyone to know he's a vampire and then there's also Kaname who is the one who rescued her all those years ago and she likes him but she also likes Zero too. Yeah, Vampire Night is a decent series. Yep, I, I have both seasons now. Yep. Anyway, before we get into the manga I also have a couple art books. Yep. The first one being a art book that I got new. I found the Given art book. I really like Given. I saw this art book. I had to get it. I ordered it from Japan, so it took a bit of time to get here, but it was worth it. Look at all the Given illustrations. And there's like one in the middle that thought that's nothing on that page. There's like this one in the middle that folds right out. They have like the colour images on one side and like the black and white on the other. I won't completely pull it out. Here yeah, it's all illustrations from Given. Given's great by the way, I would recommend it. It's a BL series about a band. But if you enter Given, check out this art book. Yep. The next art book I found used for an extremely cheap price, considering this is out of print, and that is the Fushigi Yugi art book, and this is in English as well. And Fushigi Yugi has some very excellent artwork to it. So when I saw this was so cheap on eBay, I just had to get it. The artwork of Fushigi Yugi is so nice. And again, we have this bit in the middle here. If I straighten it a bit, that completely like falls out to create a very big picture in the middle, which is very nice. And if I can get it back in. Without it to bend them. The, the second, the second hand art book is really fantastic. There's interviews and stuff in the back of it too. 
but you're glad to have found this. Anyway, now we've got those out the way, we can move on to the manga. Perfectly. Uh, I'm going to start with this pile. This is something I found on eBay. This is the entirety of um, Chibi Vampire, volumes 1 to 14, and MA or the short story collection. And Chibi Vampire, this one's the opposite way round, but it still reads this way. Like the cover slipped, but the inside isn't. It's a bit weird. Chibi Vampire is a series that I watched the anime of Karen, the anime school, years and years ago, and I remember really liking it, and then I saw somebody selling the entirety of it three times. I actually took a while to actually get this, because there was three different lots of people selling the entire series. I missed out on the first two by being outbid. Finally managed to win the bid on this third set. It was actually cheaper of the ones as well, so yeah. So yeah, I really loved the anime, so I decided to get the entire manga when I saw it. And I've read four volumes so far, and I'm really enjoying it. It's so good. Jimmy Vampire is a series about Karen, who is like a reverse vampire. Instead of sucking people's blood, she produces extra blood. And in order to get rid of that extra blood, she has to bite someone and transfer her blood into them. If she doesn't do this, her blood will keep building up until she has a massive nosebleed. Anyway, one day she's at school and then there's this new kid comes in called Kenta Usui. And whenever she's around this guy, her blood starts building up and she, like, gets a nosebleed. And she's wondering why her blood's reacting to him. And anyway, he finds out about her and he, as her parents make him become like her guardian during the day because they can't go out during the day because they're vampires so he like watches her during the day and makes sure no one finds out about her secrets and stuff and it's a very good series as I say I've read four volumes so far although I have seen the anime which was years ago which had a weird ending yeah Chibi Vampire is very good and it's volume 9 they always have like four and ten, these little puppet theatre like things on the back. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Obviously this is out of print with it being Tokyo Pop. Fourteen. And then air mail, which is short stories. They are very enjoying Jimmy Vampire so far. And that is the complete series of it. I'll just push that over there. And now to get on to my other stack, which is my other stack. Yup. First up, I have some Yowie, as always. Yup, it's always on the top. I have Embracing Love on the bus 1, which contains volumes 1 and 2. I haven't read this yet, but this, if I can find it, not that page. This one's okay. If I can find, like, a decent page, you can see the art style is quite 90s. This is an older BL. I don't think the entirety of it was released in English. I think there's three on the buses, so six volumes out in English, whereas there's 14 volumes in total, I think. I think it was dropped after six. It still sounded interesting, though, but I, I haven't actually read this yet. It's a series as these two are porn stars and they want to like get out of the porn industry and go into like the film industry. So they're like found by this adult filmmaker. Yeah, the adult film stars looking for way out the industry. The chances arrive when they're both invited to audition for a new erotic film. Imagine their surprise when the director decides the only way for him to choose who will get the coveted read role is for them to one of the film's love scenes on the spot with each other. Things get even crazier when that guy, Kato, Kato, decides to take drastic measures to ensure he can continue seeing Iraqi after the film production's lapse. How will Iraqi respond to Kato's repulsive act? So yeah, the two porn stars who want to get out the industry and end up getting a job in an erotic film, but he only one of them can have a job and they need to like have sex with each other to decide which one gets the job. 
Dude, I haven't read this yet. I can't comment on it. But it's the alley. Next up I have read this one. This is Punch Up Volume 1. This is a waterfall volume series. It's now six volumes. But I, when I read this I didn't realise it was actually a spin-off series to a manga called Playboy Brews. This, which is a series that I looked for, but apparently it was either never released in English or it was or it's severely out of print because I couldn't find it. But it doesn't matter. This is still readable without having read the original. But I understood it. There was a few times where it was like you should know these characters. Obviously, I didn't, but still definitely readable. It's about this guy who is a um he's an interior designer. And he rocks this cat, but whilst walking by a construction site one day, he meets this guy who has been looking after his cat for him. He is a builder, and he, he and then he tells him that because he's been looking after the cat, he actually got kicked out of his house. So this guy invites him to come live with him for a while until he can find his own place. Because the guy from the original series suggested that he do that. And yeah, things go from there. There's the description. It was an interesting alley, and I am guessing, definitely going to be continuing this one. But I we're past the alley now. Yeah, that's all for the alley. So next up, I have um, Kaguya Sama, Lover's War, Volume 15, the latest volume. This is the first volume after the, um, I can't really say because if you haven't read this, spoilers. So, I, this is the first volume after what happened in the previous volume. Just to say that. And I'm looking forward to reading this, I haven't read it yet, but Kaguya Sam is a very good comedy series. About these two here, who like each other, but neither of them want to admit that they like each other because they think the first one to confess is the loser. So they start like this mind battle. They don't tell each other that they're doing it, obviously, but they kind of both just come to the same conclusion that they're going to do this battle, but they're going to try and get the other one to confess to them first. So they do like these mind games, play like to try and trick the other person into confessing first and like force them to do it, and it's very really good. So good. I would rec really recommend Kaki Summer of his War. And season two is out now I think it's finished I'm not sure though I've seen season one I'm yet to watch season two I'm waiting for the dub I don't know whether it's finished yet I will have to check yep next up I have Prince Player Volume 2 this is very good it's like a dark fantasy show Joe series and the end of this volume left it on a massive cliffhanger and now I'm going to have to wait for volume 3. Yes. Red Player is about this girl called Freya. Who is like a girl who lived in like this mountain town who grew up with these two like two guys who are like her adopted brothers. Because she's like an orphan, no one knows where she's from. And one day she goes to the palace and finds out that the prince of the kingdom has been poisoned and is dying. So the prince asks Freya, who happens to look exactly like him, to take his place as the prince and pretend to be him. But then to make, but make sure nobody finds out. So the prince dies, she takes his place and becomes the new prince. And she has to keep her identity secret. Whilst also trying to protect the kingdom from bastards like this guy. So yeah, it's a good series. It's a dark, se dark series. Somebody gets to go tap, de 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 decapitated right in the first volume. So yeah, one of the main guys, he gets decapitated right in the first volume. So yeah, it's not as comedic as Yone of the Dawn or as... It's definitely darker than Yone of the Dawn. It's still very good though. I would recommend you to not read it though, because it's a show show. You can go recommend yourself to go over there. Oh. Anyway, next up we have Kamisama Kiss 23 and 24. I am finished the series finally, finally completed this series. 
that smart work. I've been really, I've been trying to complete the series for such a while now, and now I've finally finished it with these two volumes, and I already have volume 25. I've had it for a while. It's on the shelf over here because it's it's the, like the correct edition. I got it in last year, as far as I remember. But I have read it all. I've completed this series. I can concentrate on finally finish a different series now that this one is done. I did enjoy this series. It ended the way I thought it would end because I knew how it would end because I rocked. Because I do that. Yeah, I like you. I know you like spoilers. You know, Kamizama Kiss is a good series. It's about Nanami who, after her father gets into a lot of debt, kicks her out. Does he kick her out of her? No, he offers her to debt collectors, I think. And then she runs away, finds this guy called Mukage who tells her to go to the shrine where she does go to and she finds out he was the right god of the shrine and now she has to become the new god of the shrine along with Tomoe who is a fox who used to be a yokai but he's now a familiar and he becomes her familiar and she has to like run the shrine along with him and then other stuff happens and shit goes from there and it's a good series I would recommend it. It's 25 volumes. Bit long but it's fine. Next up, I have Volume 4 of An Incurable Case of Love by Maki and Joji. Uh, uh, this is a very good Jose series. It's like, he's a doctor and she's a nurse and she became a nurse because she witnessed him save the life of this old man on the streets when she was a teenager, which made her want to become a nurse. So she became a nurse and she meets up with him again, hoping that he's right to so this kind guy who saved this old man, but he's actually kind of not he's a bit of a dick but she still likes him and it yeah it's like it goes from there it's a good series i like mark and joji's other stuff too so i do enjoy this one i think it's only seven volumes as well next up i have another completed series which is our how x machine gun volume 18 the final one this is the final volume I'll show some pictures from the start so it's not as spoilerish. There you go. Our How Ice Machine Girl is such a good series. I enjoyed the characters and this so much. And it's finally ended. But I think they were releasing it at volume 18.5. Don't show the end bits. There, it says something about the volume 18.5. Which is like a fan book or something. I don't know if it's getting released in English or not. Anyway, I'll ha- I ended exactly how I thought it would end. I predicted the ending perfectly. And this series is about airsoft. Like, Hotaru asks, like, go to this host club because her friend got ripped off there. Ends up getting into a airsoft battle with one of the hosts. Then she loses the battle but breaks some of the stuff that he says to pay him back. She has to join his airsoft team, not realising that Hotoro is a girl because she looks very boyish. And she later, she later finds out after becoming a member of the team and wanting to stay a part of the team after she pays off her debt that she really wants to stay a part of the team. But she finds out that girls aren't actually well on the team due to something that happened in the past. So she has to keep her gender a secret in order to stay on this airsoft team and try and defeat other teams. It's a very good series. The characters are very good, very enjoyable. I would recommend this. I'd say it's ended at 18 volumes. It was such a good series. It's, a, it's the only sports series that I actually. Next up, I have a new release, and that is Fiance of the Wizard, Volume 1. This is a isekai shoujo based off a light novel and. It was decent, it was a bit rushed at times, but yeah, it's about this girl, she's reincarnated into another world, she doesn't, it doesn't explain how, she just said, woke up one day with her memories, she got sick when she was three years old, realised she used to live in Japan, in the modern world, and now she's in this fantasy world, he's a common isekai premise, and now she's met this guy with black hair, the blacker someone's hair in this world, the more magic they have, and she meets this guy with jet black hair when she's like seven years old, and they like grow up together, but then he 
something happens that makes him go off to school but they like became engaged beforehand and then he comes back seven years later and he's kind of changed but she doesn't like you know if they're still engaged or not and stuff like that but the isekai element to this series was kind of unnecessary this would have done just as well it would have been pretty much the exact same thing if it just been a normal fantasy series the isekai was just thrown in there for the sake of it being an isekai it wasn't needed it could have just been a regular fantasy and it would have been exactly the same there's only one point in here where she really references being from another world like she only uses her knowledge from her other world once about foul meanings but there's a book on foul meanings in that world anyway so kind of unnecessary yeah, this is an isekai for the sake of being an isekai basically it didn't have to be, it could have just been a normal fantasy. Anyway, it is only five volumes long, so I will be continuing with it. Although the light novel is nine volumes plus, so I highly doubt it covers it all. Anyway, next up I have another new series. That is The Daily Lives of High School Boys, Volume 1. This is a comedy series about the daily lives of high school boys. We have these three friends here who just hang out and do stuff at school, after school, and it's a, quite an amusing series. I like most of these, each like, it's like episodic. I like, like some of them were better than others. I really like some of them. There was one where they sit and meet this girl standing on a hill and they like talking about the wind in a very dramatic way. There's another good one where they found a stick on the way home from school and pretend to be in like a fantasy RPG but leave their bags behind. There's one about them trying on skirts, his little sister's skirts. So yeah, if you like the anime, I would recommend the manga. I haven't seen the anime yet, but I did enjoy this and I would definitely be picking up more. It's kind of like, sort of like a niche joke, as a manga die, a sort of series only with boys rather than girls. It's very good. Next up I have Rough on the Other Side, a Na uh, Nagabe short story collection. This is a Nagabe manga. She, they, I don't know if boy or girl wrote, Go on the Other Side, and Wise Wise Beast of the Wisdom Wisdoms, I haven't read that one. And this is a short story collection, so it's about like different forms of love between human and monsters. And the short stories in this, there's like different short stories. My favourite of the short stories was... I liked The Wolf Man and The Girl Wolf and I liked... Emergency rations and bountiful feasts the best. Anyway, the, the short stories are The You Tomorrow Daisy, The Wolfman, and, which is about a girl and a giant bird. Wolfman and the Girl Wolf is about this wolfman who, find, who was raised by humans, who finds this girl who was raised by wolves. Emergency Rations and Battle of Feast is about this like bird man who rescues this little girl with the intention of eating her. Midnight Waltz is about this girl who meets this vampire who looks like a bat and they dance together. The White King is about this boy who goes to the zoo every night to talk to this white lion. And Those Without Eyes is about this blind girl rescued by this monster in the forest when she doesn't know this monster's intentions. Yeah, this was a good series. I like some of the short stories more than others. But yeah, like I said my two favourites were the rations one and the wolf one. If you like Naga Bay, I would recommend this. Next up I have Cells at Work Code Black, volume 5. A continuation of the diabetes storyline from the previous one. I haven't read it yet. But I really did like this. Series. Out of Cells at Work and Co. Black. The two, I, there's Rose more spin-offs too. They're the only two I've read. 
But out of the two of them, I definitely prefer Co Black. It's definitely the more interesting out of the two. It's definitely the one with the more high stakes. It's more of like a dystopian world inside of this body. Yeah, it's definitely more interesting. There's more risk involved. And I just like this one better. And it sounds like Co Black. Very good series. Very looking forward to the anime. It's about cells at work, it's about human body cells and what they do inside of you. Only this is what happens when you're, like, unhealthy. Like, we have an unhealthy lifestyle. That's what this one is. Rather than, like, the average person of cells at work, the original. But you love this one. If you like the original, definitely recommend this. I'm looking forward to the anime. Next up, I have... Children of the Whales, volume 15. This is volume contains, this mainly contains Orca's backstory, and you get to know more about Orca and his intentions and why he's doing what he is. And it was a very good volume. Again, the artwork's brilliant. The hands. I've never seen a manga author draw hands as well as Abi Umada. Yeah, the artwork in this series. Is very good. And especially the cover. Children of the Whales is a darker shoujo series about these children, well, these, the, this group of people who live on the mud whale, which is like a giant slab of land floating in the middle of the sand sea. And there's two types of people we have the marked who have like psychic powers, and then the unmarked who don't, but the marked doll die young. And nobody knows why, they just think it's part of being marked. And they're just living their lives normally until one day they come across this other island and rescue this girl called Rykos. And she starts to reveal to them the truth of the mud whale and the truth of the marked and the rest of the world. And it's very good. I would recommend this, especially for the artwork. Look at those hands. Anyway, next up I have... BL Metamorphosis Volume 2, which is a very sweet, cute series about this little old lady here who, ha who like bonds with this 17 year old girl over BL manga. One day she's in a bookstore, she sees a BL manga, picks it up, gets obsessed, we and then this girl who works in the bookshop notices that, and she's never been able to talk to anyone about BL because no one else in her class likes it. So this old lady's the first person who she's really being able to talk to about her hobby, and the two of them just form this bond, and they hang out together and like discuss BL and go to conventions. Like this volume is that they're going to Comic Cat to buy Dojins from their favorite author, yeah, and it's just a really cute series. And this old lady's now trying to convince this 17 year old girl to start writing her own BL. And they have cake and discuss who they ship and stuff like that. This will be my sister in like 20 years time, it maybe will. Next up we have Junji Ito's Venus in the Blind Spot. If you've seen my previous video where I go over my most anticipated manga, whether I enjoyed it or not, this you would have seen this in there. So yeah, uh, it's a Junji Ito short story collection about horror stories. I won't go over this too much as I discussed it in more detail in the previous. This, this also has some like cooler artwork from the longer human and the Juzumaki in here. I discussed it in more detail in my previous video, but here's this. The short stories that this contains are Billions of Own, Human Chair, No on Earth You Love, Venus in the Blind Spot, The Wicking Woman, Master Umez and Me, which is a biographical series, one about his, like, experiences with Umez and his work and how it inspired him. Now, how we've made came to Professor Kurada, which is the only story in here that I did not like. Demon of Alligator Fault, the sad Tale of the Principal Post, which is completely in colour now. And Keepsake, Human Chair was my favourite. So yeah, here's the rock. 
Like, the Enigma is out of thought now, which is like a classic, I've read it before obviously, but it now has some cool pages. Or cool panels, more like. Like. Billions Alone, which I think it was originally called by a different name, also has some like. Cool pages. So yeah, this is a Junji Ito short story collection. If you enjoy Junji Ito, pick this one up. It's more light on the, like, horror, like the imagery, like the horror imagery, it's more light on it in this one than some of his other works. So it might be good for beginners. There's Venus in the blind spot. Can't go wrong with Junjito. Next up, Perfect World Volume 2. I read this yesterday. No, I read this two days ago. Continuation of Perfect World. It's about this girl who meets up with her high school crush again. As in, she's 27 now, I think. And when she meets up with him again, she finds out he is actually now in a wheelchair. But obviously she still wants to pursue a relationship with him after finding this out. But he's trying to push her away, saying it's not a good idea to date me. I have all these issues. I, there's, I probably won't live as long as a normal person. And he's like, he's going about all the like the complications he has and stuff like that. But she decides to pursue him anyway. And I heard that the series gets quite dramatic later on. But I'm okay with that. I've read Stepping on Roses. I need to finish that physically. I've read it online before. So yeah, if I can read Stepping on Roses and get through the drama in that, I can read anything. They're a perfect world. I would recommend it. It's a Josai series with a difference. Next up, I have Sweat and Soap Volume 3. I love this series. It's so good. It's just about a romance between this girl who sweats a lot and this guy who makes soap. She works in his, like, work. He makes the soap and she loves the soap and she works in the same company as him, but she sweats a lot. But he really loves the smell of her. And they just become a couple through that and then they do smutty stuff together and it's such a good series. It's a sane series. And they've upped the age rate. I don't think the previous volume was an 18. This one is. I would have to, I'd have to check to make sure, but I don't think it was. Uh, sweat and soap, very good. If you like smutty series, give that one a go. It's very good. Even if the guy does have weird eyes. I mentioned this in the previous video. Next up, I have a series called I Don't Know How to Give Birth. This is a one shot about this. This is an autobiographical one shot by Azami Kazuma about her experiences in getting pregnant and going through IVF and then pregnancy and then giving birth and having this baby and it was a very good one shot manga I do hope her other autobiographical manga about her marriage does get released in English at some point but yeah this was a good it, it was a good comedy there's a chapter about her choosing maternity underwear there's a chapter about Softening up her nipples, ready for breastfeeding. There's a chapter where she keeps asking to ask her husband to jerk off in a bottle so they could test his sperm count. Yeah, it was a um, interesting comedy read, and I would recommend it. I think it's a Jose. I would think I would think it's a Jose. Yeah, give it a go if you're interested in autobiographical stuff, kind of like. Secretly, I've been something about being sexless on my lesbian experience with women, or so things like that. It's a good one. And last up, I have a very old series. I don't know how old, actually. I think it was early 2000s, which I found on eBay, which is Stargazing Dog by Takashi Murakami. This is quite a thin volume. It's fit. And this is a series about... They group like these policemen find this abandoned car in a field with two dead bodies inside one of which being the body of a man who has been dead for over a year and or was it a year and a half 
and the other body is that of a little dog who's only been dead for three months. And this is the story of how they came to be there, and basically the relationship between this man, who's just known as Daddy, and this little dog, who's called Happy, and their journey to how they ended up there, and then like a little sequel thing. A little... in the back. So we have a sequel called Sunflowers, which is about this man, who was kind of tasked with identifying them, and who find out who they were. See, this was a good manga. It's a short read. There's the back. So basically, yeah, give this one a go. It's a short read, but it was very good. I would recommend it. There we go. Mm. Happy is cute. Sitting among the sunflowers. Yeah, I would recommend Stargazing Dog if you can find it. I found this on eBay. I could, this is the. I knew about this series beforehand, but I didn't think it even had a print release in English, but probably did. I took it. I found this. I don't know how easy it is to find, but yeah, I enjoyed this. And that is it for my haul this month. Another look from me, who you shoved over here and forgot about. Yeah, but she's in an emotional state right now. I'm not. I don't like being shoved over there because I said something about Fence Fryer being a shoujo. She's in the huff. She broke up with her boyfriend again. Don't. Bring it up. Okay, that's it for this video. And I will see you again for a video at some point. Yeah, bye. I'm going to go so bad. They'll get back together within the week, trust me. Anyway, bye. Bye.